All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. This week, we're gonna show you how to make your own synthetic gutta percha golf ball. And by we, I mean 19th century long nose club making expert, Elmer Nahum. I've talked about Elmer quite a bit on the channel and finally had an opportunity to meet him in person at the 2023 Columbus Antique Golf Show. And the ball that Elmer's gonna show you how to make today would have been the dominant ball used in the gutty golf era up to about 1904. It features a line cut pattern that Elmer is able to put on the ball with a vintage line cut mold. And I know that the question I'm gonna get asked the most from this video is where do you find that mold? Well, the short answer is you have to find one of these at auction, and when you do, they're usually pretty expensive. So I just wanted to offer an alternative to using that mold, but still be able to make your own synthetic gutta percha balls. And that is to use a dimple pattern mold that would have been used to make golf balls in the 1950s and later. These molds are much easier to find and much more affordable than the line cut pattern molds or the mesh pattern mold that I use to make my own pre-35 hickory golf balls. So just wanted to offer that as an alternative. These balls are meant, in my opinion, to be practice balls for gutty rounds. I still highly recommend you pick up the McIntyre Park for your formal gutty events. And in fact, most gutty events will require the use of the park. So using these practice gutty balls will give you uh, an opportunity to get more familiar with the feel and performance of the park without the risk of losing the park because the parks are pretty expensive balls. So without further ado, let's get into that tutorial with Elmer Nahum. Thanks for watching folks. We'll see you next time. All right, we have some synthetic gutta percha, very similar to the real gutta percha, but uh, it's a little lighter. Uh, it, not, it doesn't quite as uh, compact as, as well as the original gutta percha. So the ball's maybe 10% lighter, I'm guessing, than the original gutta percha ball. So um, all you do is uh, measure it, heat it up, uh, smash it down, get, the, get all these particles so they're, they're kind of smashed and melded together. And then we put it in the mold and we'll put it in, put it in the press too. So this, this is... Um, actually a, a, a mold that was made for remolding gutta percha balls, not for really making them from scratch. So the amount of pressure that I get with this device is not quite as much as, as this. So what we're gonna do, since I don't have another line cut uh, gutta percha mold, which you can see the line cut there, um, which was the common ball in the 1870s, 1880s. Um, since we don't have a real mold that I could put in a press, I just take this and I'll stick it in the press. I want to be careful to not overdo it and crack this thing. So so let's go ahead and get uh, started. So we'll start off. I, I wrote as a reminder with this tin I need 68.6 .6 grams of gutta percha. So Set that to 68. So you already know what the weight of the tin is in relation to how much you have to add to that. You're taking yes, that into yes, account. Yeah. yes. Now I'm going to get the inevitable question from somebody who wants to do this. Uh, where did they source the synthetic gutta percha that you're using right now? You can get it from Rimpex, R-I-M-P-E-X, Rimpex Rubber. And from China, you have to email the guy, and uh, you yeah, you buy it in a kilogram. It's like a hundred bucks, okay. or two kilo, two kilograms. I got for like 140 or something okay. like that. All right, so we got the gutta percha in there. I got this temperature set at somewhere between 160 and 180. Um, just a bucket of water, or just a pot of water. So we'll pour the gutta percha in. And how long is it going to take for it to turn into something? Well, the nice thing about this gutta percha is if you look real close, you can see, like, here's the original. It's opaque. It looks like a pill. Yeah. But you'll start to see it's oh, yeah. start, starting to get translucent. Right. So once it gets fully, tr every piece is fully translucent, I'm going to take it. Normally I have, like, a plastic thing at home. But I'll, I'll uh, put it on the board and then do a first mush together whatever the technical term is for that the cool the cool thing about this is it's 180 degrees but the gutta percha doesn't 
retain heat at all. So as soon as you take it out, you think you wouldn't be able to handle it with your hand, but yeah. at least I can handle it. It's not bad at all. So you can try to mush this together if you want while it's in there. We're almost there. So, we're, so it's all clear now. That didn't take very long at all. So we're going to do the first kind of mushing. So get the water off, let it cool for a second, and then I just squeeze it like this. Hopefully the table doesn't collapse. That would be bad. So I'm just trying to get all these pieces together. Kind of looks like a brain right now, a little bit, and uh, we want that to go away. We want the salsi, that's the medical term for, okay. for that to, to go away. So we'll put it back in again. And let that heat up for another minute or two. I made this, I just made this thing to fit in there. You'll see why in a second. So my setup at home, I put this in a vise. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get enough. All right, so I think that'll probably be good enough. Now, I'm not an expert on this. This isn't my thing. Uh, I kind of just do this on the side. So if anybody has any suggestions out there, let me know. So I'm going to smash it again. Try to get this, things together as much as I can. Here, the table almost collapsing. Okay. You have all the equipment failures. The table would be... Uh... So I, I don't get it perfectly spherical. I, I actually want it a little ovoid. Stick it in the ball press. Yeah, ovoid so it can fit in the mold, right? Yes. Yeah. And put that on. You got time, you don't have to totally rush. I'm gonna do this just initially to squish it down. This is called the home press. These were available. Yeah, I was just gonna say, there's one of these in the Jeff Ellis auction a couple auctions ago. Yeah. And it's and expensive when you find it. That's where I put water from. Okay, well you, so. you were bidding against me then. Well, maybe not that one, I, this was another one. Okay. This was. Okay, here we go. All right, tightening it down. And what we're looking for is some oozing out. Okay. Now, and that's normally, the Saturn ring we're going to get. Normally, actually, maybe if you can, can you help hold this down with your hand? Yeah. Yeah, can you film it? There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Maybe that'll do it. I haven't done this on the road yet. So we'll see how this turns out. And we'll leave that in for a couple minutes. So it's going to cool into the mold. Yeah. And then um, we're going to get the Saturn ring. I do have these dedicated. These have never touched any toenails. <laughs> dedicated. It's this thing happens, to, it happens to perfectly fit the, the Saturn uh, ring. I mean, that, that diameter. Look at that. That is a perfect fit. Now, I don't know if everyone, if it's standard like that, Definitely don't want yeah, to get the flat to flat toenail one. Yeah. You get the one that the curve. This works great. And now, when when we play this ball, um, how is it going to compare to say a McIntyre Park or you know? It's pretty close. I, it's yeah. About the same. I okay. I mean, the material looks the same as what I've already it seen is, melted yeah, so far the with the pack. Material. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Well, we can probably release it now a little prematurely. I think. All right, let's see. There we go. It's a little... It looks like a golf ball. Didn't get as much of a Saturn ring as I wanted, but... Hold it right there um, and see if I can zoom in on it with some detail. <laughs> so there's the Saturn ring. Yep. And we're going to trim that off. You can see the, the mesh. All right, so next is the exciting part of trimming it off. And you can reuse this, any leftovers. Yeah, so always save the extra, got to purchase it. So we're just going to trim. And 
and then I'm going to use a file here in a sec. But you'll, you'll still be able to feel the seam after this. Love those Instagram videos, huh? <laughs> this is my, this is my uh, Berenstein catheter I'm using right here. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, sorry, there's a little medical joke there. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm now using my, uh, my file, a uh, straight file. You can feel there's a, there's a little bit of a, a lip a there, ridge. Yeah. So we're just going to file it down. Now, McIntyre's balls are nicer than these. They're, like, they're really smooth. They're painted. So if you, if you want like the yeah. finest finish, McIntyre has, has the best. I haven't perfected have it yet. Have you tried to paint any of these yet? I have before? not. Yeah. So they, they, they're white. I don't want to get the paint on my clubs. It seems like I end up getting paint on my clubs. That's one of the downsides. I'll just throw a historical note in here. If this was real gutta percha, it would be black before yeah. it was white. Black, and they also had a red version okay. too, right? Um, so here's the fresh one. Let's bring the camera down here. And actually, I'm going to put the mic here. So here's the, the fresh one and the old one, the matured one. Hear that, hear that sound? Oh yeah. So that's the difference. And if you played with the park, that's a familiar sound when you, like me, hit it into the street and it bounces along right. back into play, and hopefully. It's, uh, <laughs> so you're supposed to let these mature for several months, six months I heard. Oh, um, right. Even the ones that you made right here. This would be better if you, I, if I play with them a week afterwards, but you're supposed to, I don't know, I guess the Forgans and whatever, whoever were making the, the balls, they would let them sit for a while and then paint them, I believe. I, I don't know the order. I have to check on that. I'm not, I'm not an expert on, yeah. on the golf ball history yet. Right. And they, they would take, uh, you know, the lead paint. Yeah. And Look, there's a picture of, uh, yeah. you can see, this is James Govin. And he actually went on to the United States. He lived in Philly and he helped build Pine Valley. But he's got, he's at Forgan's shop. This is, um, Robert Forgan's brother Andrew and I thought this was Jamie Anderson but it's not this is somebody else um, I forgot I think I have his name there Alex Clark okay. um, but he you can see he's got the, the paint uh, in his hands rolling it Great. bunch of balls big presses here I assume it's to do multiple balls at a time yeah. so you could kind of see um, there's the paint there and then here you, if you see they're, they're hammering so I have one of those. All it was, the thing about the golf club making was it was, they didn't really use their own tools. They, they used other people's tools. So this happens to be a cobbler's hammer. And the cobbler's hammer, for what I understood, they would sharpen it. So this thing's pretty sharp. You can actually cut yourself with it. So I played around with trying to make the smooth ones to try to hand hammer them. And I, yeah. I haven't had much success yet. Yeah. Maybe it is a synthetic. I think it's the material that doesn't really allow the hammers. Yeah, so may, well. maybe. Oh, let's do a quick plug here. This is this is your book, Practical Club Making, and uh, this is the second edition. Second yeah, edition it's in between because I think they say if you change more than a certain percentage of pages, I, there are about forty pages that I've changed significantly in yeah, here. And it's the changes are basically just uh, improved or more accurate information or clearer. Explanation. Yeah, try some of the photos um, are are improved. Um, I actually made. A mistake on that uh, attribution of the ball makers okay. and um, I made and in fact this page here I made a mistake on the layout okay. um, and I I should have put the, the all the all the I had the clubs all oriented one way but they they're supposed to be this way so anyway yeah okay. so it's a how how to mostly that's the main goal I want people to make these clubs plant the seeds so other people can learn from them, and hopefully we can get uh, this old-time hickory golf going. Yeah, sounds great. Well, thank you for taking the time to show us that. Um, I've learned some things that I'm going to apply to my own ball making at home. And uh, yeah, um, def where, where can people find your book online if they want to order it? If you just touch, type in practical club making okay. uh, book, and you'll find it. Yeah. Uh, I have a, a blog, and there's a pay PayPal 
you can pay. And then you're also on Instagram too. I'm on it. That's my main thing. Practical club maker. Practical club maker. Thanks, Elmer. Okay. Thank you.